Salut à toutes et à tous et bienvenue dans Story Series saison 4 épisode 23. What's your t-shirt? Pearl Jam. Oh, OK, got you. Always Pearl Jam. <rire> Cette semaine, on vous explique dans le détail comment se fabrique la série la plus flippante et endurante du petit écran. Three, two, one. Alors que la saison 10 de The Walking Dead touche à sa fin et qu'il va falloir attendre plusieurs mois pour voir la prochaine, nous avons décidé d'entrer dans ses entrailles avec l'aide d'une spécialiste. Depuis décembre 2016, la réalisatrice Rosemary Rodriguez fait partie des heureux élus à raconter les histoires sanglantes de Daryl, Carole et leurs ennemis morts vivants. Féru de scènes d'action, de grands moments d'émotion et d'analyse profonde des personnages, la metteuse en scène s'est illustrée dans le cinéma indépendant, mais aussi dans les brillantes The Good Wife, Jessica Jones ou encore Ellen Wills. Mais son moment préféré, c'est quand elle retrouve la chaleur moite d'Atlanta pour filmer des zombies, comme elle nous l'explique depuis son bureau à Los Angeles. You arrived on The Walking Dead on season 7. How do you deal with getting into a family that has been running for a long time and, well, you can have the new kids. Well, I mean, I had worked with Jeffrey Dean Morgan on The Good Wife, and we really hit it off. We really liked working together. And so one day I came into my house and I remember putting my keys down and I got a text. Do you want to do The Walking Dead? And so my husband was in the kitchen and I was like, Hey, Nestor, somebody's asking me if I want to do The Walking Dead, but I don't know who it is. And he goes, well, tell him, fuck yeah. And then say, then ask him who it is. I'm sorry, who are you? So I was, literally was like, fuck yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> anyway, he was like, oh, it's Jeffrey. So the next day I was on the phone with Scott Gimple and we had a nice chat. And then that was that. You are my sunshine. Go on. My only sunshine, you make me happy when the skies are gray. Do not let me distract you, young man. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. So First uh, episode you directed was Sing Me a Song. Yeah. It was quite a very weird and difficult episode because it's very talkative. You have mm -hmm. to film a lot of dialogues mm -hmm. and sometimes some, and a very violent scene uh, in between. So can you just tell me how was your first day and what scene you started with? It was a great script for me. I thought it was great because I loved, you know, Carl to try to find another facet of his character. Um, as well was very, uh, a great challenge for me and I was very excited about that. Get that air out of your face, let me see. The part that was scary for me was right from the beginning um, in that conversation with Scott Gimple, he was like, oh, this is my favorite comic. Like I've been waiting for years for this episode. No pressure. And from that moment on, I didn't sleep. Like, for the rest of the like, time, I was like, oh my God, this is iconic to Scott and like everybody. And I'm like, holy shit, how am I gonna, I can't let anyone down, right? Mm. So it was like a lot of pressure. So I went to set so that I could, uh, you know, we were having a meeting during lunch and I wanted to sort of check in with Chandler and talk to him a little bit about what was coming up. And um, while I was there, um, Andrew Lincoln showed up and I got to talk to him and I was like, tell me about Chandler and I, you know, I want to be there for him, but I want to make sure, you know, just how does he like to work? And I just wanted to know. And, and it turns out he was looking also to talk to me about that also. Of course, being an outsider and not yeah. knowing, you know, he wanted to make sure that Chandler was going to be okay with me you know, in such a big moment and so a big scene. And so we had a great conversation and um, it really, it re really did solidify that I felt like I was part of the family. Do 
it's very interesting what you're saying because it means you can you say trying to find another aspect to a character, which means on season seven, you can still add something new with your yeah. vision and your personality. It's very surprising. Yes. That's always the job of a director, right? Is to go in and like see, and I don't really want to go anywhere unless I feel like I can bring something, you know, to help people. And and every actor is always game for that. They're always, because like anything, you're in a job for a while, you sort of like, you know the character, you know this and that, and you have things that you can fall back on. But then everyone, at least my experience is, everyone's always like game for like, you know, cracking something open and going down a yeah. different road or something. You know, everyone likes that, so it's good. Protect the king! Protect yourself! I know because I interviewed several actors that the conditions are awful the warmth, the, the snakes, uh, insects, everything, like it's uh, hell. Uh, how is it for you, those conditions? There's so many things to, um, to prepare for that you don't really expect, like 104 degree heat, yeah. like the fact that you know the dolly grip may actually pass out and have to go inside, like, that you are drinking, I am not joking. Like you can drink six bottles and I kept track one day, six bottles of water and never pee because oh. you are sweating so profusely that like you're just replenishing to stay alive. Like it's that hot and oppressive. As well as all of the, you have to decide whether you're gonna wear, like what kind of bug spray you're gonna wear. Me, I'm like all about the chemicals, I don't care. Whatever keeps the bugs away. Mm -hmm. So it's like, give me all the deep, whatever, <laughs> like, you know, spray it on my clothes, my underwear, I don't care. Like every head to toe, I'm like, keep the bugs off of me. Um, there's snakes. I mean, it's crazy. So every episode, what I'm saying is, eight, especially 802, I felt like, you, I literally feel like I climbed Mount Everest. Come on. And then you watch actors like Andy Lincoln, Norman Reedus, you know, like, if when they have a fight or they have something to do and they're rolling around outside or they're... I mean, they are down and dirty. Like when you watch the show and you see them and they look like you think, oh, they must stink. <laughs> I mean, they are in it. Like <laughs> it is so visceral because they do that. They will get on set, roll around in the dirt and get all, like they are in it a thousand percent. It's incredible. I heard you say it was the oddest thing you ever shot. Even though you made indie movies where you have to do everything on your own, but still it's the oddest thing you've done. Georgia is no joke. The humidity is no joke. Like it's, it's really killer. And it's, and it's a very uh, physical show and you're on location a lot. So it's not like you're in a studio and air conditioning or any of that. So, you know, you have to remember that you still have the long, you know, still have long days. You have 12 to 14 hour days on top of that. And I don't think people necessarily understand like how much a two minute scene takes to shoot, you yeah. know, and how many hours it takes, but it takes a lot. So that show in particular is just physically grueling. Do you have any scene you love most than others? If you put all the episodes you've done together, is there one moment, maybe you've thought that's, that's great work I've done. I, I love this scene. The scene, in 904 with um with rick and daryl like in in having a fight yeah like because it's very physical they fight and then they end up in this hole what was great about doing that scene was it was an opportunity for two characters that i love so much to actually have an honest conversation hmm. if she kills he can he becomes a martyr the war was for nothing every person who died died for nothing What about the rest of us? You don't think after all the shit we've been through, we couldn't handle it? 
that world can get so busy and complicated with so many characters that, you know, sometimes, and especially with a character like Daryl or Carol, where they don't always say what they're feeling. I mean, I don't think they ever do. And so for Daryl to actually express himself to Rick and what he was feeling was really exciting for me. And so what was also exciting was the idea, you know, I asked them if they wanted to rehearse and, and they had already like gotten together mm-hmm. and Norman went into like Andy's backyard and they were already like, you know, rehearsing it. And they, you know, they told me that and then we rehearsed together and then we worked on the lines together and then went back and worked on it again. So we did a lot of work on that scene before we got on set, which doesn't happen hardly ever because a there's just no time yeah it's the actors sometimes don't need to do that they want to keep it fresh but in this case it was like let's work it out and make sure all the lines and everything works really well so that was a joy it was also a complicated scene because it was on location for the outside stuff so you have this fight physical fight and yelling and then they're in the hole and that's on stage like completely another day. Oh, okay. So then you're on stage and so they're at the bottom, but also the climbing out, some of it's on stage and some of it, went, because you have to do the part where it's just getting to the top, mm-hmm. you have to do that on location. Yeah. So it's very complicated. So that's another one where you storyboard it all out and then mark like which scene is on stage, which part is in. And then, you know, you're like, the budget is, you know, how many walkers? Well, at what point this walker comes down, falls in? You're bargaining with the producer. Can I get 10 walkers? No, I can get six. Well, if I do this, you know, can I get this crane shot? If I give up two walkers? I mean, you get into those kind of conversations. It's negotiation all the time. With everyone. I know that you love the idea of learning and learning all the time. What do you feel you've learned on that show specifically? What have I learned on The Walking Dead? It's so interesting. I think I've learned that people can be really involved in their work and really involved with their fans and millions of them and remain very humble and remain very pure of heart. So to be to bear witness to that type of behavior is extraordinary and it's possible. So I think that's what the in weird way, I think that's what The Walking Dead has done for me is like see that the stories can can be compelling in that way as well. But in real life, the people putting it together also put their heart and their soul in, into it in a way that is extraordinary based on how difficult it can be to be famous in a business mm. and you know scary that can be and overwhelming it's they seem to navigate that in the most extraordinary way Story Series, c'est terminé. La semaine prochaine, on continue à trembler avec nos séries d'horreur préférées et celles et ceux qui les fabriquent. Allez, à la semaine prochaine. <musique>